charity workers are warning that supplies of medicine and fresh water for survivors of the Indonesian tsunami are running perilously low. Children are suffering with fevers and headaches while complaining of thirst, while 1,400 people injured in the natural disaster urgently need medical care. Compounding the problem is the fact that hundreds of bodies from the tidal wave which killed at least 429 and left 128 missing have been left to rot in the streets. Badly damaged roads and torrential rains compounded the issue as ambulances brought in to take the bodies away became stuck. Elsewhere Christians in the Muslim-majority country gathered for subdued mass services on Christmas Day amid the tragedy. Pastor Marcus Tech said Tuesday his Ramat Pentecostal church in the hard-hit area of Corita did not celebrate with joyous songs this year. Instead, he said only about 100 people showed up for the Christmas Eve service, usually attended by double that number. Many congregation members had already left the area for the capital, Jakarta, or other locations away from the impact zone. This is an unusual situation because we have a very bad disaster that killed hundreds of our sisters and brothers in Banten, he said, referring to the Javanese province. So our celebration is full of grief. Church leaders called on Christians across Indonesia, the world's most populous Muslim nation, to pray for victims of the tsunami. Rizal Alaman, a doctor working for NGO Axis Epitangup, told The Telegraph, a lot of the children are sick with fevers, headaches and they haven't had enough water. We have less medicine than usual and there isn't enough clean water. They need food and people are sleeping on the floor. Harmansia, one of those involved in the disaster relief effort, said, I understand if some refugee groups don't get food, but the most important thing for us is to save lives and evacuate the bodies before they start to decompose. Su Topo Perwona Groho, spokesman for Indonesia Disaster Mitigation Agency, said there was an urgent need for heavy equipment in remote Sumer subdistrict, a hard-to-reach area near Ujing Kulin National Park, that experienced heavy damage. Some villages there have been cut off due to damaged roads and bridges, making it difficult to supply aid and help people who may be injured or trapped. Military troops, government personnel and volunteers were searching along debris-strewn beaches Where victims were found, yellow, orange and black body bags were laid out and weeping relatives identified the dead Chunks of broken concrete and splintered wood littered the coast, where hundreds of homes and hotels had stood Overnight on Monday Indonesian officials raised the death toll to 429 with 128 still missing, though admitted it was unlikely that anyone else would be found alive. Meanwhile the frontman of an Indonesian pop group who saw three of his bandmates killed when their gig was torn apart by a tsunami, buried his wife on Tuesday after she also died at the event. Rifian Fajarsia posted an emotional tribute to wife Dylan Sahara on Instagram on Tuesday, alongside a video which showed him stroking her coffin. Another photo of her was captioned, How can I live without you? Sahara was in a crowd of 200 on Tanjung Lessing Beach on Saturday as Fajarsia's band 17 performed, when a 20 feet wall of water smashed into the crowd around 9. 30 p.m. It was a day before Sahara's 26th birthday.
also killed were bassist M. Arul Bonnie Prabani, guitarist Herman Sakumbang, road manager Oki Wijaya and another crew member, whose funerals were held on Monday. The band's drummer, who has not been named, also died. In another online post, Fajarsia said, Thank you guys for your prayers. Only God can repay your kindness. Please send prayers for my wife Dylan, so she will be at peace. Saharov who was running for a parliament seat in next year's elections was identified at a hospital late Monday, according to Indonesian media. The 25-year-old was the daughter of a well-known Indonesian politician and an actress and TV personality in her own right. She was not perfect, and neither am I, but she never stopped trying to be the best wife, Fajarsia said in his emotional online tribute. I could not ask for more. Another tragic tale of survival came from the village of Waymuli, on the coast of Sumatra, where Father Yudnahak was forced to, to choose between saving his wife or his mother and baby. The 46 year old Indonesian had just gone to sleep on Saturday evening when a wall of water smashed into his house and village on the coast of Sumatra. Panicked, he fought to reach his sleeping 70 year old mother and one year old son, but then he saw his wife about to drown in the swirling waters. He plucked her to safety and they survived the fury of a volcano triggered tsunami. That smashed into Indonesia's coast, killing more than 400 people who had no time to escape. A hawk's mother and baby were found dead under mountains of debris. I didn't have time to save my mother and son, a weeping hawk told AFP from a local shelter for evacuees in one of the stricken region's hardest hit areas. I regret it so much. I can only hope they've been given a place in God's hands. Waves followed an eruption, an apparent landslide on a Nakrakadao, or child of Krakatoa, a volcanic island that formed in the early part of the 20th century near the site of the cataclysmic 1883 eruption of Krakatoa. Indonesian President Joko Widodo who faces what promises to be a tough re-election campaign next year, vowed to have all tsunami detection equipment replaced or repaired. Negroho acknowledged on Twitter that the country's network of detection buoys had been out of order since 2012 because of vandalism and budget shortfalls. But the head of Indonesia's meteorology, Climatology and Geophysics Agency, Dwikarita Karnawati, said the tsunami was likely caused by Krakatoa's volcanic activity and so could not have been picked up by the agency's sensors, which monitor conventional earthquakes responsible for more than 90% of Indonesia's tsunamis. Karnawati said that tsunami was probably caused by the collapse of a big section of the volcano slope. A Nakrakatau been erupting since June and did so it again 24 minutes before the tsunami, the geophysics agency said. Other scientists have said an underwater landslide may also have contributed to the disaster. Indonesia, a vast archipelago of more than 17,000 islands and home to 260 million people lies along the Ring of Fire, an arc of volcanoes and fault lines in the Pacific Basin. The massive eruption of Krakatoa killed more than 30,000 people and hurled so much ash that it turned day to night in the area and reduced global temperatures. Thousands were believed killed by a quake and tsunami that hit Sulawesi Island in September and an earlier quake on the island of Lombok killed 505 people in August.